Hey everybody, I'm going to show you today how to install the Renin Smart Sprint. It seems to be a lot of different people's uh, ideas and perceptions of how this should actually be mounted on the bike. I'm going to show you how, to, how we suggest to actually mount it on a bike to get the most out of the, the unit. What you're looking at here is one of the packages. Inside the package, you only have a few pieces of hardware. You have your display unit, we'll, we'll leave that to the end. You have your instructions. I suggest that everyone goes through these and read them. There's a lot of information in there about correct setup. You have a package of zip ties. We're actually finding that these are cracking on a lot of people, so we suggest you use a better, uh, thicker zip tie. So we're just gonna take these and toss them. Um, there are three magnets inside the Smart Sprint package. Three magnets can be used when you have a 36 hole wheel. If you have a 28 or 32 hole wheel, the maximum you can use is two magnets. I'll explain that, but we'll produce a different video showing how to set it up on a 28 or 32 spoke wheel. If you're using a 36 spoke wheel, that means that you could use three magnets evenly spaced at 120 degrees. I'm gonna show you how to mount that and count out your spokes so that you have all three magnets spaced correctly. Once you get your, your harness unraveled, you want to fully unwrap it and start from the rear end and mounting the sensor and working your way upwards. Starting with the rear sensor assembly, what I like to do is insert it around the cable loop and have it come down and follow along the seat stay. We need to try to get our magnet spacing to sensor within a one to two millimeter spacing. So pushing it back all the way down the seat stay as far as possible closest to the hub center is gonna get you that type of spacing. Using our aftermarket zip ties, what you wanna do is not permanently cinch it down, but get it you know, snug so that it's not moving. The idea of what we're gonna do right now is just have this temporarily here so that we can check our magnet spacing. Inside the package, there's three magnets. Magnets come apart to the front piece of the magnet, the back piece of the magnet, and a screw. We start off with one magnet to try to get the spacing correct. Pick a spoke, insert the front side of the magnet, and then the back side holder, and use the metal screw with a Phillips head screwdriver. And these are plastic components. They do not need to be torqued down extremely tight. You actually want it fairly snug at first uh, just to see if the spacing is correct or if you need to move it up and down. Spacing of the magnet to sensor is very critical for correct operation. One of the things you could do is take a traditional zip tie like I'm using to hold everything down and check the spacing. This is barely allowing the magnet to sensor to be spaced out right there. This is good. The closer that the magnet is to the sensor, the better performance we'll have. A 36 spoke wheel has 18 spokes on one side. Pick one side. I have picked the inside of the flange body here. But what you want to do is count three spokes away and that's the next mounting locations. Here is magnet number one that is connected to the inside spoke. We're going to take it and we're going to count three spokes away. This is the next mounting location of the second spoke. Position the second magnet uh, exactly like you did the first and get it somewhat tight, check your spacing to your sensor, come back and give it a final twist to secure it in place. Affixing the third magnet is exactly like what you did for the first and second magnets. Again, we position the second magnet on an inside spoke, we count three spokes away. This is the location of the third magnet. This gives us assurance that all three magnets are going to be mounted at 120 degrees. Our last piece of hardware, which is what we're actually going to start with, is the wiring harness. On our package description, we're showing that the head unit is mounted at the front of the bike. 
what we're suggesting everyone um, mount their devices is about five to six inches away from the seat post. That seems to stay away from most people's uh, pedaling characteristics and popping you know, the, the units off isn't really an issue anymore. One of the things that you want to do after you get your magnets and sensors on is make sure that everything works. We do that by taking our computer uh, head unit and making sure we put the correct information into the circumference reading. You do that by holding both buttons down. We go ahead and make our selection of what is the correct value to use. In my case, it's 521. Plug the computer into the harness until you hear a click. Now, we can check to make sure that the magnets and the sensor are working correctly. We do this by passing a magnet by the sensor back and forth. We can see that as we pass the magnet by the sensor, the wheels are spinning in the upper left hand corner. This means that all three of our magnets are working. What we have found is a distance of six to eight, six to eight inches away from the seat post is pretty good for most riders to not knock the, the computer straight off their bike. So in order to get into that spot, you can see that there's a lot of slack. So we take up the slack by wrapping the wire counterclockwise around the computer harness, like so. And what you want to do is double check your wrap from time to time to make sure that you'll have enough left over to secure everything down to the frame. The harness comes with a piece of double-sided foam tape. This is to be used underneath to secure the harness down to the top tube. Cut a little piece of this off, just a, a, a little quarter inch sliver off to save for later for a trick I'm gonna show you. For the time being, I'm putting that one aside because I already have one on top of my top tube. We stick it down, get it into the correct position, and take your wire slack and run it downwards towards your cable. Now we can finish wrapping the zip ties around the top tube and securing the head unit down. Now that you can see we have a little bit of slack underneath the tubing here, I like to run it on the inside of the seat stay. The first zip tie I like to put is right before the brake boss. Wrap your zip tie around, get it centered on the tube, and secure it. The second zip tie I like to put on is right next to the tire, just so that we make sure that we never get the wire running too close to the tire and burning it or breaking it. So we put a second zip tie there. The final two zip ties that we use are basically taking up the slack on the little strand, the little sliver of cable that we have for our brakes. The last part of the installation is just a little trick. I talked before about the double-sided foam tape. I had asked you to cut a small piece of it off so that we could use to help secure the computer down to its cradle itself. We take this little piece of tape, stick it down to the back of the computer, peel the backing on it, and then reinstall the computer. I hope you found the installation video that we made uh, on how to mount your Smart Sprint useful. As always, we're always available to talk to our customers and if you have any issues or questions, please send us an email, give us a call, see us at a national, ask me to help you with your setup. We're there for everyone and we hope you enjoy the product. Thank you.